It's a great honor to be here, to be back in a place that I used to call home, and to be talking about one of the most important issues, the defining issue of our time, and that is how we are going to feed more than 9.5 billion people a healthy and sustainable diet. Now, my journey in terms of thinking about food actually started in Indonesia about 10 years ago, when I was living with the Dayak people on the island of Borneo. But when I first went and lived with the Dayak people, I was only focused on a single issue, and that was how to protect the large charismatic animals that we find in this area, the incredible forests that we also find in this area that call this area home. But by living with the Dayak people, I heard story after story almost every day about how environmental degradation was having a direct impact on health. Like Pak Hadak up here, who talked about how deforestation was directly impacting flooding, which was having a direct impact on the health, mainly of kids. Oh, the second video is not playing. Or up in the upper right-hand corner, rice. Rice is incredibly important to the Dayak people. It's central to their culture and also as a food group. And the Dayak families would grow enough rice to feed their family, enough healthy, nutritious, sustainable rice for a full year, and also fruits and vegetables. But what was happening is they were actually selling their lands, converting it into palm oil plantation, and going into the markets and buying these same foods. But they were too expensive, so instead they were choosing to buy highly processed foods, directly impacting the health, mainly of the kids. And what became crystal clear in my work in this village was that you cannot only focus on a single issue. And we've been talking about that over the last couple of days. We can't work in silos any longer. We can't go and say it's just about the environment or it's just about the health. We need an integrated health and environment agenda. It's only by having this integrated agenda that we'll be able to solve the complex challenges that we are facing. Now, this idea of an integrated agenda is gaining momentum in this term called planetary health. And maybe when you think about the term planetary health, you look at that blue sphere up there and you say, well, it's just about the health of the planet Earth. But that's the old way of thinking. The new way of thinking is about the health of each one of us, human civilization, and our dependence upon the natural systems. It's that dependence that is extremely important. If we continue to degrade the environment, it comes back to hurt us. So what does food have to do with this? Well, the Eat Lancet Commission, we believe that food is absolutely central to planetary health. And we have gathered 20 of the top scientists to answer this basic question of how we're going to feed more than 9.5 billion people a healthy and sustainable diet and do it within the biophysical constraints of planet Earth. One of our main goals that we have is using this report to help achieve the SDGs, the Ambitious Agenda 2030. And we've heard over the last couple of days how food is central to so many of these SDGs, such as 2, 3, 12, 13, 14, and 15. But also, if we want to solve the complex problem of transforming the food system and achieving the SDGs, SDG number 17 is absolutely critical, and that's partnerships. And that's what's central to the work that EAT does. Gathering scientists, business leaders, policymakers, civil society leaders to come together like we are today and over the past two days to solve these issues. Second goal is achieving the Paris Climate Agreement by 2050. We know that food is central to this, and we will not be able to solve this monumental task if we do not transform the food system. As a commission, we believe it's time to stop talking about the problems. It's time to turn our words into action. It's time to get down to business. However, before we do that, what we need are science-based targets. We need those goalposts of how to get there. And what was so important about the Paris Climate Agreement was the fact that for the first time, the international community had these 
science-based targets, the two degrees, saying that we have to come together and limit warming below that. Once we had that, we could then say, what is our carbon budget? How much is left? What is the time frame upon which we have to get there? So the science-based targets gave us, number one, the agreement, and number two, they're helping us turn words into action. This is missing for the food system, these science-based targets. So the Eat Lancet Commission are setting the science-based targets for healthy diets. Now, we've heard a lot about healthy diets over the last couple of days, but if I was to ask 50 of you what a healthy diet is, would we, would we all say the same thing? Probably not. So we're helping to set the human dietary needs, the science-based targets, for what we as humans need around major food groups, like whole grains, vegetables, fruits, proteins, dairies, and added fats. We're doing the same for um, um, sustainable agricultural systems. Also, sustainable foods, what are those? We've heard that term thrown around a lot over the last couple of days. But what can we call, when can we call a food sustainable? We're also setting the science-based targets for how much greenhouse gas emissions an egg system can emit. The amount of water that can be used, nitrogen and phosphorus that can flow out of the system. The amount of biodiversity that can be lost and the amount of land that can be cleared. We're taking these two targets, the health targets, the egg system targets, and we are modeling them into what we're calling a safe operating space for food system. This is a space within which we need to be thinking right now. The upper and the lower limits where all decisions need to be made. And why this is so important is because we can actually have win-lose diets. Diets that are healthy, but they're not good for they're not good for planet Earth. We can also have lose-win diets. Diets that are good for planet Earth, but they're not healthy. And of course, there is the lose-lose diets, which are good for nobody. The space that we need to be operating within, and the options that we're going to help create with this report, are the win-win solutions. The solutions that are good for people and good for the planet. Now, I can't share with you any of the results but I can share with you some high-level ideas and concepts. Stealing from Michael Pollan and his three rules of eating. That is, we should eat mostly plants. We should eat real food. And we should eat just enough and waste none. When we follow these three rules, begin to follow these three rules, when we have the science-based targets, and when we start turning words into action, then we can start meeting the needs of the future, future generations and this child, Inda, and ensure that every single child on this planet, all 9.5 billion people on this planet, have access to a healthy, sustainable, and affordable diet. This is a human right. If we get it right with food, we get it right with everything else. Thank you.